Dorset buttons have been a big industry in this part of the world for hundreds of years and have been exported all around the globe. Before we had elastic and poppers, um, bows and buttons were the way to keep everything attached uh, in your clothing line. Um, we can see here in this, this is an apprenticeship indenture for Robert Groves, who in fact in 1642 was apprenticed to become a button maker. And it's documents like this which can show us how long the industry's been around. We have another piece of evidence here from our records. This is a settlement examination of a woman called Rebecca Silby. And she's um, up before the um, magistrates in 1749 to have it decided whether the parish of Ewan Minster will support her um, as she is penniless and has a young child as well. She's been previously indentured and she has learnt the, the gloving and buttoning trade and that's how she's been making her living, but obviously not a good living. So um, at this point she's, she's looking to be put on the parish as it were, she gets taken on in that regard. She's not been making a lot of money because the button making is piecework and she needs to make lots and lots to make a good living. But you have to make no such rush today. You're going to be taken through the process of making a traditional Dorset wheel button by um, a modern crafter and you can enjoy making that at your own speed. There are places for you to pause and catch up and use it to decorate your own clothing or give as a gift. Hi, I'm Julia and today I'm going to show you how to make a dorset button. We're going to be looking at making a basic dorset crosswheel or cartwheel button, um, which is kind of like the thought that most people make at the moment. So we'll get started. What we need to do first of all is cut some wool. Um, I would recommend using about four arm lengths of wool to get started um, because the, the more wool you have, the more tricky it is to, um, to kind of manage. So I'm just going to thread the needle. And just, and just, and then pull it through so you've got quite a short length of thread. And then we just tie a very simple knot around the ring and hold the end. So what we need to do, we do we're doing blanket stitch around the around the hoop. So <coughs> we go through the ring, and then we go up through the loop that we've made at the top and we need to pull it tight. So we'll go through that again, kind of like we're trying to go over this bit of wall that we've got here. So make a loop and hold it with your thumb and then push the needle through the ring, pull the wall through and then come back through the loop at the top and pull it tight. And then you just have to keep going. There are a couple of things that can happen when you're doing this. One of the things is that your stitch can go to the wrong side of your, it's going to kind of go over to the back. But all you need to do is just kind of like give it a little pull, make sure it's going the right way. The other thing is that sometimes the stitch just seems to disappear. But don't worry about that, just start again and carry on. The other thing I should say at this point is I always go anti-clockwise. I don't know why, um, it's just I find it easier. You can work your way clockwise around the, around the ring. That's perfectly fine. Doesn't make any difference. It's just, this is how I started when I first learned to make a dorset button. So it's just how I do things. Okay, so just to go over the blanket stitch again. So we make a little loop with the, um, the wall against the ring and then we go put the needle through the ring and then come back up through that loop and then just pull it nice and tight. Once you're getting close to the end of that little bit of thread that you've got there, you can always snip that off just so if it's getting in the way. And we just need to keep doing that all the way around the ring. We'll just do a few more to keep showing you how that goes. As you get to the point where your um, your end of your thread, you will need to move so move that up a bit so that you've got a longer bit of thread to work with. You don't want to double your th thread up. So when you get close to the end, you kind of like it looks like you've all, you've completely covered your ring, and then what you can do if you just push them a little bit more, just so that you are com 
because you can always squeeze a few extra stitches in and you do want the ring to be completely covered. Almost there. So what you need to do now is, if you need to, just push the ridge of the stitch, stitches round to the back of your ring. And then we need to do the spokes. Now this can be a little bit tricky and I normally never get it right first time, so oh, don't worry. We need an even number of spokes and I try and think of it as like a clock. So we've got 12 here, we've got six there. Then we need to bring the wool up to about 11 and down to five and up to 10 and then four, if I can remember how a clock works. And then we go nine and three and eight and two and I've got a big tangle, seven and one. So if you need to start again and do it again or you can move some of them over so you kind of make sure that they're kind of evenly it's like an even gap in between each one. And then you need to bring your needle up into the middle and then down on the other side. And it's like what you want to do is almost making a little cross in the middle and then again, if you need to do an extra stitch just to kind of like catch them all in, that's fine. You, that, you, want, you want that to be as in the center as you can. You can kind of like, push it around a bit to get it a bit more centered. That's fine. So, and that's the spokes. And then the next stage is the weaving. So what we do is we come up and then we go down over a thread. And then we come up to the next one and we go over again. And we keep doing that. So you come up between two spokes and then you go down behind that one and then you come up to the next one and down so you're in effect you're just wrapping the, the thread around each of the each of the spokes and then going around. This is, as I say, the basic Dorset cartwheel.